It's time to get sexy, so watch Secular Sexuality Live Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash YTSS and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash call S-E-X. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Nonprofits, the show where we discuss news and topics of the day from a skeptical humanist perspective. My name is Cynthia McDonald, and today I am joined by, to my far left, rather, by Kelly Laughlin. Hello, Kelly. How are you? Hi, Cynthia. I feel like I'm on a panel with three three famous people and me, and I'm like rubbing shoulders with giants today. This is awesome. Well, Kelly, you are the resident rock and roll god, so you are famous. <laughs> that was established already last week, don't you remember? Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> Next up. And it's been a minute since we've been on a panel together. Hey, Jim, how you doing? Not too bad. How about yourself, Cynthia? I am Thanks. doing well. Thank you for asking. And I'm even yeah. weller because you are here. How about that? Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Very good. And all the way across from the pond, I personally feel that either... It's not going to be an official nonprofit show, whether if we have somebody, unless we have somebody from Great Britain or from a Commonwealth. And today, filling that particular auspicious uh, seat would be Emma Thorne. Hello, Emma. How are you? Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm good. It is the middle of the night, and I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> then we better hurry up and get through this before Emma falls asleep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we really do appreciate you joining us, Emma. And before we actually go on, I must say that this show is a product of the Atheist Community of Austin, a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to the separation of religion and government and promoting positive atheism. Was that like in a really good podcast voice? I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, sounded good podcasty to me. So. Yeah, okay, very good. I like everybody just shake your head and agree. Very good. All right. <laughs> so we're going to talk about some things. There you go. There you go. Yes, I'm, I'm so glad that people on the panel know how to follow instructions. So today, guys, we got some things that we're going to talk about today. Boy, I tell you, first in our first segment first in our first segment. Yes, those things go together. Uh, we're going to talk about how the Hamilton team shuts the door down on their production of Hamilton, a little bit too Jesus-y for the crowd. Uh, in our second segment, we're going to talk about a science fiction actually becomes a little bit of a reality. Uh, next in our segments, we're going to talk about Colorado getting pretty progressive and actually sticking it to Kansas. And finally, we have a looking back where we talk about the papacy. Well, actually, the Roman papacy's first frat boy. Yes, you heard it here, people. The Pope was a frat boy back in the day. And as with all of our shows, links to today's topics and the news we discuss are available in the description below. And a reminder that if you want to come in to the show prepared, you can check out the nonprofit's fan page every Friday night for a list of the articles ahead of time. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. And Jim, this is all you. Yeah, so um, the Hamilton team, which is uh, the director, Lynn manuel Miranda, and basically 
all of the non-actors, um, the choreographers and all that, uh, are suing the Dorch uh, Christian Fellowship of McAllen, Texas. Yes, right here in Texas, folks. Um, because uh, they decided to steal uh, the intellectual property of the Hamilton team. Um, and the Doors, a uh, non-denominational church, um, there's uh, a lot of them running around. Um, and on the 5th, 6th of August, they put on a, a play, or they put on Hamilton, and they changed it um, in very Christian ways. Hamilton gets saved. Um, they add some other verses and uh, change some lines and, and add some things to it to, to Christianize it and, and, of course, make it better um, the way all Christian media seems to be um, better than uh, secular. But um, And so they found out about this on Friday, and I believe Hammett meant to broke the story. Um, and the Hamilton team, a spokesman for the Hamilton team, got, uh, called him up or a lawyer called up the door and said, hey, what's going on? And they said, basically, yeah, you can put Saturday's show on. So there were some people saying that the, uh, the door is lying when they say they were given permission to put it on. That's not entirely true. They were given permission to put it on on Saturday. The problem is, is that they didn't tell them that they had changed the, the show at all. Um, and I don't know if this didn't come up because um, they may not have realized that, you know, Christian churches will ruin anything by making it Christian. Um, but basically, um, there's some speculation that maybe they thought, because after the show, uh, the, uh, main pastor gets up and, uh, gives a homily or a speech. And then at the end of the speech, he basically likens homosexuality to, uh, alcohol and drug abuse, marriage problems, and, uh, which is, you know, a little anti-LGBTQIA. Although they, of course, claim to not be that. They, they make room for everybody, they say. Um, but I'm sure it's just a, a hate the sin, love the sinner type thing. And uh, so, uh, yeah, court's going to decide whether it's actually um, theft of intellectual property. Imagine that, a church stealing. So we'll see what happens um, off of that. But, oh, and this is not the first time the door's done this. Um, they did it. Uh, to the live version of Beauty and the Beast as well. Um, and if you go and try and find any of this on their website, their website is a desert now. They used to have all kinds of stuff up. If you go to their web, their website uh, and you click on any of the links um, to their YouTube, their YouTube is, is sorry, I said uh, website, it's here, their YouTube is uh, completely devoid of all content at the moment. Uh, their website does link to it. They're supposed to have sermons and other stuff, but it's not there. So if you want to go see the offending pieces, um, I would go check out Haven't Meant His Twitter feed um, right around the 5th and 6th and of August after that, because uh, he, he's posted most of the, the most horrifying things. But yeah, it, imagine for a moment that Christians are stealing people's intellectual property. <laughs> No, that never happens. <laughs> no, there's, there's a no, lot of no, it that happens. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and this is... Seth Andrews. It, I'm sorry, Jim, go ahead. No, go, go ahead. I was just going to say no, that Seth, Seth Andrews did a really good lecture entitled The Copycats, How Christianity Steals the Best Ideas. And it's about how... Uh, the church, the churches have co-opted popular culture and tried to turn it into Christian culture. So it, it's, it's a, there's a long history of this type of thing of trying to co-opt popular culture. Um, one of the things that really bothered me about it was they likening quote unquote hom homosexuality to drug addiction, alcoholism, and financial struggles. And, and now I'm going to put my Christian hat on. I can see where they might think of the first three as sins, which I totally disagree with, but I can see if, the, if in their mindset. But are they equating financial problems to a sin now? Or is it that if you sin, you have financial problems, which implies to me that poor people are sinners, right? And I'm not sure if it's a sin to be poor or they're, that you're poor because you're sinned, but no matter what, it seems like a way to make people feel bad about themselves and then run to the church for redemption, right? And, and that didn't sit wrong with me at all. 
Um, Emma, yeah. do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, I mean, I I completely agree. I wonder if it's meant to be that being homosexual is what causes you to have financial problems in some way. Um, I mean, I feel like <laughs> my reaction to the news story in general makes me a bit of a Debbie Downer. I just, I just, my reaction is that the mainstream response is always kind of cowardly. I would mm-hmm. like, you know, the Dramatist Guild is protecting writers and their intellectual property. That's fantastic. But I would love for them to say it's bad because it's deeply homophobic, whereas they sort of they never explicitly mention it. They dance around the issue. And then at the very end of their sort of message about it, they're like, and also we're inclusive. And you're supposed to sort of guess from that that they're saying that they don't agree with it. There's just this like West End Hollywood thing of not wanting to offend the homophobes because that's still a part of the audience that always really rubs me the wrong way yeah this yeah. um this uh, particular the... no i was gonna just say like this particular um this this particular a production of itself especially when it came with the with the homophobic comments was at the um the uh the altar call as they say in evangelical churches, uh, when they were doing the, like, maybe you have problems with alcohol, with the drugs, maybe you're struggling with homosexuality. And um, and even they released, I believe that the Doors did release a statement saying that, um, no, we don't have an issue with homo, um, homo, um, homosexual people. It's just that, you know, we were disinviting those who are wanting to change or get saved or if they're struggling you know for god to come in because we love everybody like you were mentioning emma but where were you going to go say hey what were you saying jim i would say yeah because th- that's probably the most egregious part in, in many ways is equating homosexuality to uh drug or alcohol abuse um the intellectual property theft is kind of kind of secondary to that because of the the impact those words can have on people and the negative impact, you know, those are the kinds of things that, that drive suicide up. Those are the kinds of things um, that make people depressed and, and think that they should not, you know, uh, that, that they're not good people and right. that's never okay. So right. I, I do think that is the more egregious part than the, the intellectual property theft. Um, mm-hmm. But I think it's the intellectual property theft that's going to cost the door uh, some money um mm. hopefully hope cost them some money but it really should be the fact that they're homophobic i i want to say both um but i just want to point this out that according to the article that we uh read that uh under copyright law churches have an exemption that allows them to perform copyrighted music during religious services however the problem with them is that they streamed it on their youtube page you know that that well, was, that's that was not the, the only problem with them <laughs> yeah that, that was not the only problem right yeah, um, yeah. so they also and, and changing uh, right yeah 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 it's a song the concessions is streaming and mm. the Sorry, folks, we got a little bit of delay between some of us, so it's, it's making it a little bit more awkward than it should be. <laughs> <laughs> We're all just going to shut up and let Jim talk. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I talk enough as it is. So, no. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, it, the changing of the words, the intellectual property, um, as far as like what the doors did and streaming it. Um, and on their particular uh, website, well, not website, but the YouTube page as well, uh, basically caused the whole cease and desist thing. Um, but it's it's important that you all brought up the uh, equating, uh, you know, being homosexual to uh, drug and alcohol use and money problems because of what that actually puts into the atmosphere when it comes to uh, this more homophobic rhetoric and how it does make people feel. Um, One of the main reasons why in the LGBTQIA plus 
community, there are higher rates of suicide is because of this very thing. Um, people are not able to be themselves because they are told that how they feel and how they live their lives is considered sinful. They're going to hell if they don't change. And they can, um, and that also stigmatizes lifestyles and also how people are and keeps them from living their truth. And then they don't necessarily feel that they are worthy to live or it's not proper to live. Um, and then they, and they could possibly end up taking their life because they're not accepted for who they are. Um, and that's, um, that's the really worrisome part. And I was even more appalled at the pastor when he was doing his whole altar call and he actually looked like he was really concerned for people when he was really making this whole um imploring for people to you know to come to jesus if they're struggling with these things did anybody else um see that and, and i'm curious to know what you guys' thoughts were were you about that what about uh, emma what did you think I mean, they're essentially advertising conversion therapy. That's mm -hmm. that's what that is. It's this attitude. And it's I think a lot of religious people think that this is a nicer way of saying it. And I've had this said to me as well as a bisexual person. I don't judge you, but God will. And it doesn't hurt people any less. In it can it's just as damaging because, you know, somebody is trying to make you feel like your existence is wrong in the eyes of the Lord. You know, it doesn't doesn't take the sting out of it. So yeah, that that kind of thing upsets me. But when you say that I'm not judging you, the Lord is judging you. You are judging. Mm -hmm. You're judgmental. You're <laughs> 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 yeah, it's hiding behind that cloak of, of hate the sin but love the sinner, and and they they don't do that. They they hate the sinner mm -hmm. just as much as the sin. They just hide behind a cloak of saying that they don't hate you right but they but they do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. under the dubious blessings of christianity there go i <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think that it's, just, it's 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 just so it's so just disheartening that um that that even happened it kind of even reminds me of i don't know like i, I know i was a um when i was a christian i used to watch a lot of uh trinity broadcasting network uh and um i i remember them oftentimes taking like secular um uh, ish genres and trying to church it up to make uh, them seem hip and cool and you know and the kids can dig it so they can really get into it and, and I almost feel like that is what was I guess like the plan here when they put on Hamilton because like it's like what the longest running show and one of the the, the biggest Broadway hits of all time and you know and the first thing that the Doors Church decided to do was say let's take Hamilton make it Jesus see and fuck it up yeah. I feel like that was that was the that was the conversation. <laughs> it's very hello fellow well, kids. So. <laughs> yeah, especially with the fuck it up part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, some of the things they change it makes the play and make less less sense, honestly. So it really I'm surprises sorry. me. Uh, Jim, go ahead and finish your thought and then I was I was thinking sorry, it's, it's really sad um, that they, said, uh, they have to co co opt popular culture instead of creating their own culture, right? That that's one of the things that gets oh, me. Oh, that's I'm, too much like right. Plenty of, <laughs> right. There's plenty of Christian music out there. You don't have to make an a CD or album cover just like the popular music cover that's out there right now. You don't need to co-opt a play mm -hmm. on Hamilton. Write your own play, right? Create Christ culture instead of co-opting popular culture. I don't. I just don't get why they do that. Yeah, it seems to me that creating and, um, your own culture would be better for you in the long run. 
Right. And and Jim, could you just uh, go ahead and just like finish your thought that they were you were saying earlier? Well, I, in order to be a good writer or to be creative in anything, I think you have to consume a lot of the creative content you're trying to create. Right. So if you're if you're a painter, you need to, to go look at a lot of paintings. Um, if you're a writer, you got to go and read a lot. And I see that in, in almost everything creative. And most Christians only want to read the Bible. And the Bible is at best badly written. So if that's your standard, then your content, everything you do is going to suck rocks because it's not original. It's not inventive. It's barely readable. Um, and I'm not talking about the bagats, you know, I'm talking about like Maccabees and some of the more exciting stuff in there is still by even the standards of the day, pretty boring. Uh, Gilgamesh is better. Um, it's a better told story. Um, and so it's not surprising that people who only read the Bible and only want to read the Bible um, can't do anything but badly mimic. Uh, what's going mm. on around them without a full understanding of, of how, why the secular material actually works and theirs doesn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, and it's funny how you even brought up Gilgamesh because the thing about it is it was told way, way better on the Darmok and Gillard at Tanagra episode on Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to read that in the Bible and I was quickly was like <sighs> it's a boring ass book <laughs> but I want to go ahead and get some final thoughts before we move on into the next segment uh, let's go ahead and start with Emma then Jim and then Kelly round us up Uh, I, yeah, I just think it's a shame. I think uh, I want to continue Kelly's point and just say, look, there's a whole Christian Netflix now of movies, terrible movies, but if people are writing all these movies, surely they could do some plays and some, you know, some play some Christian music and stuff. Yeah, there's there's enough content out there that is Christian that they don't have to awkwardly steal plays and make them homophobic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, pure flicks. <laughs> yep, that's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and Jim? <laughs> You're muted. Sorry. Um, for me, okay. it, it really is just Christians getting away with stuff that nobody else can get away with. We thought about at the Free Thought Library doing a movie night for the locals. And we decided we couldn't do it because of copyright laws. And we would get into trouble. And here these guys on are putting on a full-blown play, changing things, and they're going to get away with it. It's like, yeah, this, this makes no sense to me. So I hope they don't get away with it. Um, I wish they'd get called on the carpet more for being homophobic, um, but it is, it's going to be what it's going to be, and we'll see what happens. Agreed. Well, you know, if you guys want to put on a movie at the Free Thought Library, all you got to do is just say, hey, it's a religious service. Remember, they say that atheism is a religion anyway. Kelly? <laughs> <laughs> Only if it's a musical, right? <laughs> um, I, I think the best way to sum it up, I think the best way really to sum it all up is uh, to quote uh, Miranda when he said, it's all up to the lawyers now. And it's it's just mm -hmm. good to see that the lawyers are on it. And I hope that something does come of it, even if it is just the church not being able to put the play on anymore. I hope something does come of it, come of it. I do too. I, I really do. I... <sighs> I just want to ask them, what were you thinking? Anywho, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> uh, but before we actually go into our next segment, <laughs> we just want to thank you to our veteran and new viewers for getting us over 11 
thousand subscribers thank you guys so so much for constantly watching us every week and sharing the videos and all that other great stuff and keep on tuning in to hear us talk about whatever that shit's crazy stuff that's out there i didn't call a person that shit crazy i was just saying that we talk about that shit crazy things and we really do so if you are watching us right now and you have not subscribed yet get on that so once you subscribe like and ring that bell so that you always know when a new nonprofit episode premieres, like every Sunday at 3 p.m. Central Time, but you already knew that. And you will also get notified when we actually upload our clips. And then share the channel to our to your friends. You don't know our friends, but we could be friends. So if you want to share with us, you can. And then share it to other people that you know as well, like your family members like your coworkers, like the neighbor guy you don't like and the neighbor guy that you still owe their lawnmower to. Give that lawnmower back and also share this video. And let's get more of the word out so that we can really start helping fundraisers because now that we are over 11,000 subscribers, we can fundraise for the ACA. And are you aware that the atheist community of Austin has another YouTube channel? Well, you should be. So check out the Atheist Experience Network, a channel where you can find all ACA shows in podcast form. Subscribe at tiny.cc slash AEN podcast to listen to episodes of the nonprofits, the Atheist Experience, Secular Sexuality, and all of our other ACA shows so you don't miss a single episode. All right. So let's go ahead and go on to our next segment. And this is Kelly, our uh, local scientist. All right. This is from an article in Psychology Today by uh, PhD Gary Wenk. And it's about an amazing new discovery. We were never able to clone mammalian cells into a viable being before, a, a living creature. And they've been able to take freeze-dried mice cells and reproduce them into 75 live mice, which brings up a very interesting question in the philosophy behind abortion. If every single cell on a human being now has the possibility to become an entirely new human, does that mean we can no longer kill any cells off of a human body? Does this mean that we can't have tons tonsillectomies? Appendectomies would no longer be legal? Can we remove a wart from this point on? Because we would be in danger of killing another human being. So it brings up a really interesting question. Um, Jim, you got so you look like you're ready to say something about it. So go ahead. There's just you see for me the, the real problem is is some of the ethical considerations with doing this with humans, right? Um, so identity um, is, is a big issue. If I have someone who looks exactly like me because he's a clone of me. Who, who, who am I and who is he type thing. And granted, his experiences will be different than mine and, and yada, yada. So it brings up a lot of these types of questions. And what do you do if you we could also then alter the DNA so that basically you're growing a body for spare parts? Um, or maybe, you, you know, when you say change the DNA, change the DNA so it's not a brain and it would not be considered another human. Is that ethical uh, to, to do that to the DNA? There's all these really cool science fiction issues that, that come up with this, but no, we're going to get stuck with, you know, what Kelly was just saying about uh, now every cell is a human being and, and uh, you can't do that. It's like, wait a minute, come on. It, dead sense. Yeah, I've got skin cells falling off my body every day. Um, those aren't, aren't human beings. Um, You're committing murder. So yeah, it, Jim. it does make it interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I, I think the, the, the safest thing. <laughs> Yeah. I think the safest thing for us to do is to assume that if you have a cell uh, capable of recreating a human, you have something that is, you have a human being. I think that is the safest thing to say from an ethical point of view. Um, 
simply to, to, to cover all that because you could get into some really murky stuff if you're not careful, I think. Um, and I probably, you know, read and watched way too much sci-fi on this stuff. But there are some really interesting questions and we're going to get stuck with, you know, Christians not understanding the science. They already don't understand evolution and now we're going to be doing this. Uh-oh. So it'll be interesting <laughs> to see what happens with that. But I think there are, are more important questions than the abortion question on this one. But we'll probably get stuck with that one. Yeah, we're already having uh, Christians go on to their various platforms and start screaming about, you know, just different scientific discoveries. I, I remember watching a woman going ape shit when she uh, heard about CRISPR and was equating that to uh, some type of um, antichrist plot in order to genetically modify human beings and make them um, not love Jesus. It, it was a whole rant. And and I'm, I'm wondering if something like this would, would happen, but um, I'm curious um, to, to hear Emma's thoughts because like, of course, like you're across the pond looking at all of this stuff that has transpired here at the United States and now that we have this. So what are your thoughts about all of that? Yeah, it's kind of interesting because you have the, the immediate sort of, especially Christian reaction is very, they're playing God. Whereas mm. when you look at the scientists talking about it, they're coming from a perspective of prolonging human life by creating organs. And I mean, the um, the main kind of thing that uh, I think they were talking about in the articles on this was about preserving species, you know, and we've got like terrible biodiversity issues, you know, sort of. More we kill the planet, the more we kill the animals, and then the more they that kills the planet again in a cycle. Um, but it's just, yeah, I get once again, I'm just gonna throw in my hat and be the negative Nancy of the day because <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna be a thing that people try and use as a an, a, a pro abortion argument, and anti choice people aren't gonna take it because it just doesn't. It, it's never been a good defense of abortion rights around when life begins and what is a human because right. the answer is we don't know and it's never going to, it's a subjective thing. It, people have different opinions from one denomination to the next. Right. Um, so I think I always think it's better to stick to arguments on legislation, to use examples uh, in bodily autonomy of things like donating organs or bone marrow and the fact that you cannot force anybody to donate those things. Um, but I am pretty excited in general about the, you know, the potential for preserving and even saving species from going extinct, which could be, a, you know, assuming I, my fear is that the science will get blocked by backlash. Um, but assuming that doesn't happen, I think that could be a really exciting thing for the planet and for preserving animal species, I don't think it's going to benefit the abortion discussion at all. Mm. <laughs> I kind of hope it doesn't come up. I, I think it would actually make it more murky. Uh, but uh, Kelly, I don't know if there's a Jesus love gene. Do you know if you would see a Jesus love gene in this whole particular? I don't know. You said that about <laughs> genetically modifying people so they wouldn't love Jesus anymore. And I was like, what gene is that that makes you love Jesus? That, that's a good one. <laughs> I, I it's think it's, there. it's Kenneth Copeland who said that, yeah, I think it's Kenneth Copeland who said that um, GMOs are a plot uh, by Satan to change human DNA so they're no longer human and can't get into heaven anymore. <laughs> Classic. You know. I, I, you know, sometimes Kenneth so, Copeland so makes that, Ken it, Ham look smart. <laughs> Does that imply that one of our pets are going to heaven? Uh, well, oh uh, no! Well, all dogs go to heaven, according to the movie. Exactly. Who you ask. Who's the gosh? Who's, who's the woman that keeps seeing heaven? And she she saw pet heaven in the clouds. Oh, and cat her. That there were dogs and cats running cat around. Her. Yeah, cat her. Yes. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they go. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, and they ride roller coasters too. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> I you know, when I was reading this particular article, I was also thinking like you, Jim, like 
I, I started to go down the, the, the science fiction rabbit hole. I can remember like all the different episodes of Star Trek and 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 the like that I've watched, or even like Star Wars. Like there's a whole movie called Attack of the Clones, right? Um, I was even thinking about Star Trek too yeah. when it when they were genetically modified people, you know, who was trying to take over the Enterprise. So I mean, what 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 are we doing, people? Um, <laughs> but I but. I, I also was just thinking about like if if we're talking about a human cell that you know because they haven't even gotten there yet the only thing that they really just did was successfully successfully uh, clone a generation of mice who happened to be all female because the Y chromosome got you know um, from uh, mutated out from male DNA from too I want to point yes out. from male DNA well, exactly and, you, and I'm glad you brought up Clone Wars because all the clones should have been female, right? Oh, well, according to the no, science I, from I this, thought I the, the article said that was an accident. Yeah. Was, I, I, th I thought the article said it was an accident that some of them ended up being female because the, the X got dropped. But anyway, the, yeah, the, maybe yeah. they should have been. <laughs> well, to their why, surprise, all the went on were here. female. Somehow the Y chromosome oh, yeah. got lost during the process. So, but yeah. they all turned out to be female. So, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the Y the Y chromosome just said "fuck it, I'm out of here" and decided to go. I'm you know, could be only one. It could only be one. But but hey, if you if we did happen to do the same experiment on human beings and we clone a whole bunch of um human beings from male dna and they all end up female maybe we can change some laws when it comes to abortion because we have more females it's like hey wait a minute you trying to tell me what i'm supposed to do with my uterus i'm just saying i don't know it could be a thing glass half full maybe Emma, no, you, you, are you feeling me? Maybe, uh, yeah. you know. <laughs> well, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think through the process, and I'm feeling like, is this? Because uh, now I'm thinking Star Wars. I'm like, is there going to be an army of female clones that are pushing for the law? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. Oh no, it'll be an army of female clones that's doing January 6th all over again, but they're attacking like the Supreme Court. Who knows? <laughs> Overturned Dobbs. <laughs> I love it how we turn science into a joke, but that's what we do. Um, <laughs> oh goodness, yes, but uh, <laughs> but you know, zygotes and and cloning and mice. Oh my! Uh, let's go ahead and get some final thoughts. Um, Jim, I'm going to start with you, then Kelly, and then Emma. Take us out. Um, I'm, I'm just kind of wondering if, if I were to make a clone of myself and it turned out to be female. Anyway, we'll just kind of leave that. I, that yeah, we're going to leave it at that. <laughs> just... <laughs> <laughs> I got oh images in my head. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I think that's everyone's final <laughs> mind at this point. <laughs> I'm just thinking like, hmm, how would that look? <laughs> I'm for it. Why not, <laughs> Kelly? <laughs> I after I found out that all the male DNA turned female, I kind of started feeling unnatural after that. So that that was just my thing. But uh, there, it's <laughs> this article had left so many questions for me. Like, when when would a cell gain a soul? Do cells mm. have souls inherently? Does a cell get a soul when it's separated from the body? Or does it have to be viable as a single entity for a certain period of time? You know, it brings up so many questions and it really makes this whole abortion debate really more complicated. That's just my final thought. My final thought is that it just, there's too much to think about. There you go. Yeah. For my little brain. <laughs> Yeah, all the brain cells is just gonna go ahead and check out just like the Y chromosomes. Emma, 
<laughs> yeah, my brain's my brain's pretty much checking out. I uh, I think it's it definitely tickles the sci-fi, uh, you know, interesting ethical questions of like, oh, what is it going to be like? Severance? Could I have maybe I'll have a clone sent to work instead of me? Uh, I think that's more interesting than <laughs> when does a cell become a person? Does it have a soul? I think we mm. I think we turn this sci-fi and then we make it a lot more fun. Yes, yes. Um, and then we will probably do another episode of Star Trek where we are talking about artificial beings or or beings that were created by man, if they um, have consciousness or not. Was Data a person? Is doc is the Doctor from Voyager a person? That's the plot of Picard, you know? isn't it? Yeah, it, yeah, it was. <laughs> so you know, like, hey, I well, you know. Just think about all the things that Star Trek has actually inspired. It inspired the cell phone, it inspired the tablet, and now cloning female generation mice. So let's go with <laughs> <So> go there. <laughs> I should stop it right now because to be honest with you, I was going through a whole rabbit hole myself. I was thinking about legal and moral implications when it comes to you know, this whole thing about being able to clone mammals and the possibility of actually um, cloning human beings. Would we just keep it at just creating like, you know, uh, additional organs? Uh, if like for some reason a person needs a kidney or a heart or 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 a lung or, or anything that may get damaged as they get older or they go into an accident or, and then they end up on the order. organ donor list. I, or sorry, say that again, Kelly. I said, or if Jim needs a partner. Or Jim needs a partner. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way to end the segment. <laughs> <laughs> Move on. I'm praying. I got you. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to actually take a break. <laughs> We're going to take a break. And, um, and if you didn't tune into the ACA's other shows last week, here is what you missed. Sex in the Shower is just like, hey, what if we take one of the most pleasurable acts in the human experience, but one of us will be freezing cold and the other one will be uncomfortable? How about how about we do that? Any takers? Yeah. <laughs> or there's a hope for me in the afterlife or a reward for being that. Like, like I, I don't need that to do what I do. If anything, I think those ideas limit human potential. I, I don't think we have to be the subjects of a divine creator to have meaningful relationships with people. There is the Christianity aspect, there's the mm -hmm. nationalism aspect, and there's the big ass guns aspect. Although that Christianity bit, they might want to close read it because I don't think Jesus mentions guns that often. There are so many famous magicians out there that are also well known like skeptics. And it's like, just because you're a magician doesn't mean that you're a skeptic and vice versa. Like I'm a skeptic, but I definitely cannot do magic. You can't see me from the waist down, but from the waist down, I'm actually a lizard and mm. I can lay eggs and I, I can run faster than a cheetah as a result of my very powerful lizard legs. Would you just accept that? Or would you be skeptical? What do I have? I need something physical to hold my hand. So like this is species one of my lip gloss. And then species one of my lip gloss produces species two oh. of my lip gloss. And species two can produce with species one, but then species three comes up here. Species three can produce with species two, but not species one. These two can reproduce together, but this one can't go all the way back to the first one, which we've already said is basically genetically identical with a slight iteration. But That's gene that is genetics. One. I, I'm not skeptical that, that uh, <laughs> I'm not skeptical that Shannon, never mind. <laughs> oh. I'm skeptical about uh, Shannon's lizard legs or lip gloss, but <laughs> but we're back. Uh, lizard legs mostly, <laughs> but you know. I've seen Shannon Q's legs, 
And I would say she does not have lizard legs. So how about that? <laughs> I actually met in person. We actually met in person. So I can say empirically that Shannon Hughes. She's got some older skirts, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did not happen to observe <laughs> lizard legs. From Shannon Q. So, <laughs> from what I understand, lizard, we're just well. from what I understand, lizard people can shape shift. So, I think we should just keep the mm. possibility open. Mm. Mm. You know, you yeah. got a point there, Kelly. You you got a point there. You got me on that one. You got me on well, that one. Well, if I comb I, my I, hair right now, I'm, I'm about to re-examine. Oh, say that your hair. <laughs> I said, you said I had a point, and I said, yeah, but if I comb my hair right, nobody notices it. <laughs> boom, boom, ching. Okay, guys, let me read the script. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a script right now? <laughs> yes, we do. Well, at least I do. It. God, let me let me do my job that I get oodles. Just let me do it. Yeah. So it's been a long two years. Okay. <laughs> it's been a long two years or so since we've all been able to congregate together. But based on the updates from the CDC and other scientific organizations, we are going to be able to ease back into doing live shows and events. Jim knows about that. So our next event will be August 27th. 2022, which is the Bat Cruise. Na, 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 na. We have Yay. chartered the boat. Yay! The bats are roasting under, or no, they're not roasting, but they're roosting. They're roosting people under the Congress uh, Av Avenue Bridge. I'm so sorry, my baby is screaming. And we are looking forward to a wonderful BYOB or BYOF food evening with our ACA community of friends. Details on purchasing tickets will be shared soon, but now you have the date of summer of, uh, uh, you have the date for summer scheduling. Hooked on findings work for me, people. And the next day, August 28th, we will continue our live shows from the Free Thought Library. Both Talk Heathen and the Atheist Experience will broadcast at their normal times 1 p.m. and 4.30 p.m. respectively. But now you can be part of the studio audience. So start planning now to get the whole family into the station wagon to schlep on over to Austin, Texas and meet and greet your fellow non-believers, show hosts, and the people who make the magic possible. Na -na 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 the crew so the doors to the library will be open at 12 noon to the public so we hope to see you there and if you can't make it in august we will continue to broadcast from the library the last sunday of each month so keep watching the show and our website atheist-community.org for news and information as we expand our in-studio offerings in the future. All right. <clears throat> See, I told you. Script. Now, moving on. <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> we have a step, step, step in the right direction. And Emma is going to step us on in. Take it, Emma. Thank you very much. Well, I'm very happy to introduce this one because I'm finally actually in a good mood over a story. Uh, <laughs> so this is Colorado is planning to uh, or is ending this week's sales tax for period products and diapers and other necessities like that. Um, so this is from Colorado Politics by Hannah Metzger uh, from August 10th. And uh, yeah, this is super exciting. Um, it's a way to, they're basically framing it as a way to save people in Colorado money. They've got uh, some other initiatives on saving money as well. It's super exciting. I'm very happy for the people of Colorado because we in the UK abolished the tampon tax, the tampon tax it's colloquially known uh, last year. Right. And since then, sanitary products have been available in a lot more places for free is really good for people in schools and things like that you can find them even in you know clubs and supermarkets sometimes because it's cheaper to get them 
Um, so that's really good. I also, I'm kind of hoping that there's going to be a, a nice kind of social effect we might get from no longer labeling sanitary products as luxury because not bleeding everywhere and all over your furniture is not really a luxury <laughs> I feel like um and yeah we've had a few <laughs> stories of we've had a few stories of young men suggesting that uh ladies just hold it in and things like that so I'm hoping that maybe this <laughs> puts a stop to that and uh yeah I mean a lot of the reaction we had in the UK to it, a lot of the conservative kind of reaction was, oh, the government's going to lose money on the sales tax. So it's really nice to see the reporting of this uh, happening in Colorado is about saving the people money right? rather than because it was it was a very negative, oh, this, the sales tax makes our government so much money. What are we going to do? And right. uh, I, I think that <laughs> it's nice to actually think about the people on the poverty <clears throat> line being able to afford sanitary products as like maybe a bit more of a priority. So that was right. kind of my take. I, I'm actually happy about this one. <laughs> nice. No, I, I was happy about this too, but I wanted to just like remark on the comment that you said that like some, you, you heard from some uh, of, the, um, of the other side. <laughs> This telling ladies who have or telling people who have a, the the ability to ministrate uh, just to hold it in. It's not P. Mm. I just want to put that out there. It's not P. OK, you, you just I, can't just like do you know cross the worst your legs part? and shake it. <laughs> what is the, the worst, worst part? The worst part is that arguments on arguments I've seen online over some people thinking there is not a separate place for pee and for blood. Uh, I've seen I've seen women arguing that that is not the case, who just don't know their own anatomy, and I find that you know, or rather, assign female at birth, and it's just so devastating. And I think a lot of it is from kind of a bit of a purity culture thing. So good to fight that a little bit here. <laughs> God, I, I, before I bring um, our, our our men folk into the conversation, I just got to say this. You know, this, this is the reason why I really feel like certain, like sexual education needs to be a part of the curriculum all over. Uh, because sexual education is not just about, you know, um, how how to reproduce and and what that is all about it's also about biology and knowing how your body works if you have sexual organs that are female there is a possibility that you will uh mature to a point where you are going to menstruate every month and you need to know how to take care of that uh, because uh, unfortunately there are far too many uh uh, people who have the um, the uh, the be, the ability to menstruate who don't know how because they hadn't gotten the proper education on how to take care of their bodies. You know, when you are dealing with people who may be living under the poverty line and they may not be able to afford to get their feminine napkins and their you know their sanitary napkins every month because um, it's it's too expensive, um, and also. Um, even if you are on uh, additional like assistance, like SNAP benefits or link benefits would be like, you know, like your food coupons um, for people who happen to live under the federal poverty line. Or is say, for instance, if you um, had a child and um, you get WIC assistance, like, you know, that's so that you can get food for your baby and, and things of that nature, you know, uh, feminine napkins and and on and also diapers and things of that nature are not covered under those benefits you know you you're still paying out of pocket so um it's and it's unfortunate that we are still stigmatizing um how you know people's bodies work which is basically how they've been working since humans were a thing you know we this and, and it has to be, and it has to be something that works in order for you to be able to even reproduce the human species, right? So I, I so I don't understand why there's this such this this why basically it seems like in in some cases like people are being punished 
in um you know especially like you know women who are you know able to administrate well people who are able to administrate um are being punished um in in some cases like in the pocketbook just so that they can go ahead and take care of the things that happen to their bodies that they have no no control over but you know that that's just my uh rant uh i will get down off of my soapbox now and i will pass it off to jim and then kelly uh let's bring you guys into the conversation and, and what you think um and what are your thoughts what that happened in colorado i, I think it's interesting that the highest state in the union um is also turning out to be the most empathetic mm. finally and they say weed's bad i don't know um the two probably aren't even close related. I'm just making the, the joke there, or trying to anyway, and failed miserably. Um, I, <laughs> I, I, it's okay. Yeah, it, it, it makes it, it makes no sense to me is how you could even consider taxing this. We don't tax food. Um, you know, we don't. There's a lot of things we don't tax because people need them and they're a necessity for living. Um, this would be one of them. Um, so how are we? still taxing these in 2022 and i think the answer is you know conservative republicans but uh beat that dead horse all day long so but yeah that, it, it's about time indeed indeed kelly what are your thoughts um well obviously this doesn't affect me at all but i am in total agreement that it was the right thing to do um i i did a thing because i was curious there is an estimated $4.2 billion in sales of feminine hygiene products in the USA. And in my mm. state of Michigan, we charge a 6% sales tax. So I use that as my base. And that's $252 million every year just in taxes. That's a lot of money in sales tax for something that's a necessity that shouldn't yeah. be taxed at all. So I, I, yeah, I'm behind this 100%. I even think we could go a little for, bit further and stop sales tax of uh, uh, nutrition supplements, over-the-counter medications, all hygiene, all hygiene products, all of them. These are things that people oh. need to get along in our society today. So, yeah, the only right. thing I worry about is uh, where we're going to pick up that tax revenue at. What, what's going to, where are those taxes going to come from? Because you know they're they're going to come from somewhere. They're going to start taxing something else. In oh, Colorado, well, obviously they're taxing cannabis, but how much you know? How much more can we tax that? Well, mm -hmm. in, in Colorado, they're not losing that much money. I mean, it's not a huge part of their budget. Um, and I think that's the th thing people need to look at. You're not defunding anything at that point, right? In, in most cases. Um, even in, in some place like California or New York, you know, with a large population, I don't think you're talking about even 1% of, of, of a budget. So when you say, yeah, the money's got to come from somewhere, it's not a lot. The slush fund might be bigger. Mm. Well, the, and yeah, actually, I just figured we'll just add five cents more onto a six pack is what I figured. Or taxing cigarettes or, you know, like this, like, um, yeah. like you said, um, maybe putting in a bigger uh, tax for um, cannabis. Um, but actually, this they're getting pretty progressive in the highest state in the land, which also can be looks like the most empathetic. You know, I had a backup plan, guys, to go to Canada, but I might move to Colorado. I don't know. Um, because like some of the things that they're actually doing. Um, is that they actually provided $25 million in property tax relief for farmers, ranchers, and properties used for renewable energy production. Uh, they're expanding their Rural Jump Start program, which provides grants and tax relief for new businesses who move into rural or economically distressed areas and hire new employees. Um, and also, all four-year-olds will be able to attend preschool for free in the fall of 2023, saving families an average of $4,300. And they are actually also exempting most small businesses from the business personal property tax. 
Um, there's uh, there's a whole uh, list, uh, guys, if you get a chance uh, to look at the articles uh, that we placed in uh, today's description so that you can see all the different um, measures that the, uh, that the governor has signed um, into a law going forward in Colorado. And it's pretty exciting. Uh, I, I wish they do this in Illinois because uh, our tax, I think, is like around 10% if I'm not mistaken. And then we also have an additional city tax on top of that. So, yeah, let's see the, you know, I need to write my mayor. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. I, <laughs> I'm going to step back right now because I'll get out back on a, on a, um, on a soapbox. If, if you, if you let me, Emma, save me. Well, I did, I, li I like um, you mentioned the the other you know taxes um, or the tax reductions um, and exemptions and things. I the one of the ones that did stand out for me was the um, four year olds attending preschool, and I thought yeah. that was a really good. It's it's basically they do seem to be uh, you know saving people money on the things that are necessities, like you know new small businesses kind of is a necessity um if you don't want crazy uh like amazon owning everything basically um but the four-year-olds attending school for free it's it's wild that that's not already a thing especially because there's so much sort of i think it's a little bit of fear mongering at the moment but um there's a lot of concern at the moment over people a few people having families and that's because just like before every recession uh, not to again be the doomsayer, but <laughs> just like before every big uh, economic collapse, people stop having children because they can't afford it. Um, mm. So get definitely just easing that, and that plays into diapers and things again as well, just easing that and making it affordable to just live and function as a person is something that really I feel like everywhere should be doing. It's nice to see it happening, even though it feels like it. it is now 2022 and we should hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Definitely. I um I I was I was really hoping that like this particular measures that Colorado has taken would be something that could be possibly adopted to other states and maybe we I don't know, maybe maybe we can like actually elect people in our uh Congress that would could push this to be on the federal level. Do you think that'll happen, Jim? I hope um to start well sales taxes aren't affected by i mean state sales yeah. taxes aren't affected at the federal level so it's got to mm -hmm. be a state by state thing i don't know what at the federal level off the top of my head is being taxed in that respect but yeah i think we need to be careful about who's making money off of human misery um mm -hmm. and also well, well let me back that up i would i think part of the the kindergarten thing is is that pre-k is is also child care and also the re reason why the republicans don't want it is because they're trying to defund public schools to say that it doesn't work so that only the rich go to school and uh the poor are uneducated and therefore you hear man manipulate um i don't know if that's actively in their mind but that is the effect of what they're doing so we need yeah we, we need to be more empathetic we need to understand where people are coming from and help them survive and live day to day and even the government shouldn't be making money off of that agree we're, we're yeah, creating a generation of go ahead kelly uh, i was just going to say jim's right we're creating a generation of fast food workers right now because yeah. we're not we're not getting people it, educated to to work better jobs because education has gotten you know, to the point where uh, we can't afford it anymore and it should be free it should it should i don't no one should be in the point where they are you know trying to figure out if they should further their education or buy food for their family that that should never that should never be a choice and same with <clears throat> if I should go to a doctor or um, if, but if I can't go to a doctor because I might lose my job because I don't have coverage um, in order for me to be able to leave work for a day so that I can actually get checked out. I mean, like 
it's it's really unfortunate like all these particular decisions that we have here that should not be a thing you know i i don't understand why people have to go in thousands and thousands and sometimes even hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt in order for them to get like a a bachelor's or a master's degree that makes no sense to me and and i don't also and and you do have like other industrialized countries that actually uh foot the bill even for um even for higher education for their constituents and it's not like it's not something that we can't do we just don't and that actually is going to bite us in the butt as a nation because we are producing people who are more and more ignorant. You know, I, I remember uh, last week it was even mentioned about how we don't teach critical thinking in schools. You know, we, we just like reproduce like, like a core uh, curriculum, regurgitate it on a test and then move on. And but are you learning anything and are you being taught how to think? I would say no. So I, I'm. So I, I think that I'm a little bit on Emma's uh, Debbie Downer side, unfortunately, but it's really not hard for me to do because I'm a jaded person anyway. But I am at least glad <laughs> that Colorado is making some progressive measures in order to make it, to make life not as arduous for their uh, for the people who are living in their state. Um, and with that particular thing said. Um, Kelly, I'm going to give you the last word and then we're going to go ahead and move on to our final segment. Um, I, I would like to see more things lose their sales tax. How about cleaning supplies? We all need those. It's something that's a necessity. Why, why are we paying taxes on that too? Um, I, I, I think this is a, a really, this really is a step in the right direction to get rid of these taxes. I just like to see more of it happen. I do as well. I, I totally agree. And with that being said, one more announcement, people. Become a member and also buy our shit. Yes, you can become a member of this channel for as little as 99 cents a month. Just click the join button below the video and this will give you access to special chat emojis. And also, we do have a brand new store so please visit at tiny.cc slash merch ACA. That's tiny.cc slash merch ACA to get your favorite items like t-shirts, hoodies, and coffee mugs. And you can check out our new items like beanies, phone cases, and tote bags. And all ACA shows feature a special limited edition item each month. So please be sure to check out the store for NP merch and merch from our other stores. No, no, we just have one store. But we have other shows. So check out the merch. Buy our shit from other shows. It helps us out a lot when you buy our shit. Thank you. And with that also said, I think I need to be saved by video. And let's just do a looking back. Looking back. So this particular uh, segment is talking about Pope John the 12th, who was the most messed up Pope in history. What? A messed up Pope? Yes. Even more messed up -er, muster upper than the ones that you've known before. This one was, he was a piece of work, y'all. Um, so Pope, Pope the 12th, or um, he was born actually um, Octavian, uh, and he was also a prince of Rome. He inherited that title from his father, uh, became um, a pope at 17 years of age uh, from in 1960. Did you know that? I'm sorry, not 1960, but 960, 960, 960 was the year that he actually became pope and he was 17 years old. Um, some of the reasons why he can be considered a messed up Pope. Well, let me tell you. Well, one of the things that he did is that he elected a 10 year old to be Bishop. Yes, he did. 
Uh, he also had uh, multiple sexual partners, including, it's uh, allegedly, uh, he had a sexual relationship with his niece. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, and also, um, he uh, did have an idea of separation of religion and government people. And let me tell you why. Because he thought that if he was doing affairs as the Prince of Rome, he would do that under his name, Octavian when he was handling, you know, secular measures, but when he was handling the measures of the church or the handling the measures of God, he would go by Pippity Pop Pope and I don't care the 12th. Yes. And uh, <laughs> he did some other, he did some other backhanded, really messed up things too. But, you know, I'm going to go ahead and just allow the crew to pull me back into the panel so we can discuss the frat boy of Rome. Uh, <laughs> Emma, I think I stole your stun thunder with that because I think you said that you were really happy when you read that. <laughs> that was my, my new favorite term is American, uh, American. Oh my God. It's because I'm thinking frat boy, ancient Roman frat boy. Yeah, that's one yes. of my favorite uh, phrases that I've now read. Um, yeah, I thought it was nice that uh, modern evangelists and televangelists have kept up this tradition of using a uh, position of high spiritual power for personal and financial gain i'm glad that of we're course. still we're still doing that today <laughs> yes, uh, yes. and a, a ruler surrounding himself with incompetent people and yes men uh, and then revealing that he didn't actually know what he was doing i thought i'm sure i've watched a donald trump documentary that sounds just like this <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did, yeah, I did kind of think. I mean, I think um, uh, I think Kelly's going to mention this a, a bit more, but I did kind of think when I was reading it, it reminded me that so much of our history of uh, monarchs and stuff like that is, especially you know, things like paintings and stuff, are, are visual portraits of so many rulers are written by their enemies and designed to spread, you know, like a bad image. Mm -hmm. So I kind of I, I was a little bit wary of that angle and i also thought i kind of think some of the stuff it starts off talking about he didn't know who his mother was mm -hmm. and i thought probably controversial at the time but i don't think we should consider that an issue in hindsight right um, <laughs> and then the idea that you know he was uh he slept with a lot of women the niece thing very off again probably okay at the time but uh <laughs> that's a strange one but also like i can't help but think it might be better if the Pope was like not big into purity culture, like it's so that I kind of feel like he got there's a lot of stuff in the list that is just like he likes to sleep around and stuff. And I think I kind of don't really, I, I think those are, if anything, I think those are better ways for a Pope to be. It's more like how he stabbed everyone in the back and was too young and stupid to make any sensible decisions or alliances or maintain those. Yeah, that I think is more. Yeah, you know, important and interesting. Yeah, I I thought that that was pretty crazy. Well, but then again, you know, he was seventeen years old and he was not educated to be to take over the papacy. That was just something that just kind of like happened by fluke, fluke, at the behest of his dad. Right? He said, you know, you need a job, Pope. Yes, let's make you Pope. <laughs> <laughs> you really need the hat. So <laughs> right, right. Make sure you kiss the ring too. <laughs> Jim, what did you think when you read this? <laughs> well, I think the only thing that, that, that he's got kind of going for him is that at the time that he was alive and, and womanizing and having sex with, with anything that moved, um, none of that was forbidden uh, to, to Catholic priests at the time. I think it was 100 or 200 years later that that actually came into being. So that wasn't quite the huge scandal then that it would be now. But I think that if you, you if you wanted to, to present evidence that reincarnation is a thing, I think I think from Pope John to Trump, you you probably got some some cases to be made there. Um, he, he backstabbed. <laughs> um, he, he 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 out and out lied. Um, he didn't have a really really good reputation at all. Um, and he parallels a lot of the, you know, Trump is still a frat boy. And he, he parallels a lot of that, um, which just, you know, was flabbergasting to me. It's like, geez. And the funny thing, though, is that he actually got kicked out as Pope. And 
the the Rome Romans, the people in Rome. I don't mean Romans, but people who lived in Rome uh, rebelled against that because one, an outsider, a non-Roman, uh, yes. appointed the person, and the person was from outside of Rome as well. And they were like, "He's better than a non-Roman." And I'm like, "I've I've heard this before." Um, <laughs> you know, the, the whole. Pro, the pro, Gee, call, I right? wonder where I got that from. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, history repeats itself. Uh, reincarnation, uh, all those things you can say. But yeah, there are a lot of interesting parallels between him and um, a lot of the republicans so um mm-hmm. yeah it, it is it is interesting and i was not shocked at all i'm, I'm a recovering catholic and uh i was not shocked at all by that um okay. i was surprised that he was considered the worst but you know uh, <laughs> 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 no just just the ancient frat boy that's all <laughs> but kelly you had yeah, some exactly. interesting things that you thought of when you read this uh won't you share with the group <laughs> Yeah, as as Emma mentioned, that his his history was mostly written by his enemies, so we do kind of have a warped view of his life. Um, however, even other contemporary um, writings about him don't paint him in that great of a light. But what it seems like the real problem was was his dual role as the Prince of Rome and as the Pope, because he would do things that would benefit Rome instead of the church. And that caused a lot of the problems with uh, with the Holy Roman Emperor, is that, mm-hmm. he was, that he was more worried about politics than the religion. And so he made enemies mo- a, lot of, a, a lot of the time just because of that. I don't think it's a surprise that there was bad popes. Uh, we, we know of some, Cesare Borgia, for example, I think most oh, people yeah. know who he was. Oh, yeah. Um, I actually went and looked at some of the papal history, and John John was the last of 12 popes that were all considered bad popes. It was act- that period was actually called the Saculum Obscurum, the Dark Century, or, mm. and I love this name, the Pornocracy. Cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, 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 ah. And that's oh, not a movie. That's not a porn movie. The it used to be. <laughs> or the rule of the harlots was also another name for this, this period in papal history. So, oh, and nice. It, it was it was John's family, the Theophylacti, that actually ran the pope, the papal office at the time, which is how he got the job at seventeen. Mm-hmm. So this this just one small group of influential people completely took over the whole religious organization. That's well, that's still going on today, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Um, Guess nothing you, really changes, huh? Nah, 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 no. But I I did particularly like this, even though, like, yes, we know the enemies, you know, wrote his stuff, but. I personally feel that this needs to be a documentary, like a like a series, like a drama series, like Cesare Borgia's uh, series was, um, because like at, at first when I watched that, I was like, oh, a scandalo. But I was like, when I read this, I was like, ooh, even more a scandalo. So I was yeah. like, somebody needs to go ahead and pick this up <laughs> and make this a whole like you know, um, uh, you know, drama drama series like. Yeah, like get on that like right away. You'll make a lot. Let's of money. do all of them through the whole pornocracy. Yeah, let's do the whole. We, porn- I, yes, and call it. We could we could call it the pornocracy. <laughs> yes, call it the pornocracy. Oh, you would get tons of viewers just because of the name. Yes, yes, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. You heard it here first, folks. We're going to be producing the pornography. And it is not Thursday. Well, it's Thursday where Emma is, but. <laughs> always oh Thursday. It's always some, somewhere, it's always Thursday. But man, I, I did love. <laughs> I did love how, you know, we because we talked about like how he would stab people in the back, right? I love how he betrayed the one person that got him straight. I, I love how he did that. Where that yeah. which that was the German emperor of uh, Otto, who was kind of like like the um the uh the opposite of him. You know, he was older, he was more mature, he was actually, you know, versed in 
in politics and how to run shit. But uh, <laughs> John was not. And then John was like, yeah, here's the thing. I don't want to do it your way anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, just completely circumvent you, try to start wars and then have to get like, you know, ran back into my particular area because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So, yeah, history, it really does repeat itself. Um, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, but, yeah, that that is the saga, people, of, of Pope John the Twelfth. Uh, please, I encourage you all to read, read about him. And when you see our series, the, the, the pornocracy, let, let's let this, this know you heard it here first. <laughs> Can, can we get on board with this? I don't know if we're going to have to like pull talent, but I think that we can do it. <sighs> so yeah, people... We'll probably find, find some backers for that. Oh, yeah. Totally. Totally. We'll get on that. And if you are interested in seeing the pornocracy, holler at us. <laughs> I really think you need to do that. And you can actually even talk about that in our social media outlets. So you can join our social media outlets that are completely fan run. And you can find most of the nonprofit hosts on the Atheist Community of Discord by going to tiny.cc slash ACD Discord and on Facebook at tiny.cc slash FBNP. And if you would like to know, or if you would like to support the show, rather, you can do so by becoming a patron at tiny.cc slash patreon.np. And if you find yourself already shopping at Amazon, support the Atheist Community of Austin by shopping at smile.amazon.com and selecting the Atheist Community of Austin as the beneficiary. And be sure to use that link to help out the ACA. We really do appreciate it. And guys, we do value your feedback. So tell us what you like and what you don't like in the comment section below. Or you can email us at nonprofits at atheist-community.org. And also visit the Atheist Community of Austin's official website at atheist-community.org on the latest of what's been happening. And feel free to contact the ACA at tv at atheist-community.org. So... I think that uh, we have come to the end of everything that we are doing. I just want to get a word from everyone. Let's start out with Kelly, then Jim, and then Emma. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm still laughing at Jim. Um, <laughs> I, I'm just so happy to be here and uh, watch out for those clones, I guess, you know, you don't, you don't want to make sure you want to make sure that you don't have a horde of female clones coming after you. So <laughs> it's a, clone, a horde of female clones coming after you in the pornocracy. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, gather yourself. Don't fall. <laughs> Jim, gather yourself. I'm keeping for, for a few more minutes before I fall out of my chair. Yeah, well, I mean, we just got a. I, I think we've got a, a part two for the the, the 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 pornocracy movie, and that is pornocracy two: the the clones that suck. Um, just. <laughs> Oh my gosh, uh, Emma! Uh, Emma, bring bring some um, bring some sophistication to this because I think that we're really fast. <laughs> I try. My face hurts from trying not to laugh. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much for having me, Cynthia. I'm very pleased to have been here, and I'm looking forward to uh, the next hit series, The Pornocracy. I can't wait. I'll see you at the premiere. <laughs> All of you all, we're going to do the red carpet and carpet, and you know, and have front row seats. It, it'll be great. <laughs> hey, that's a movie for you to show. <laughs> we'll get that going. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you everyone for tuning in i hope your face hurts just like ours <laughs> thank you all for watching and we'll see you next time bye now
Watch Talk Heathen live Sundays at 1 p.m. Central. Visit tiny.cc slash ytth and call into the show at 512-991-9242 or connect to the show online at tiny.cc slash callth.